Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves with GB here on FlossTube and also on Instagram and Etsy. Um, you might know me from Etsy, I make project bags and sell them, although my shop is closed at the moment. Um, but it will be back open very soon with lots of new designs. Um, this is going to be a channel primarily about cross stitch and this is my very first floss tube. Um, so welcome along. If you come here looking for something else then it's not going to be for you. Um, but if you are a sugar daddy with a fetish for cross stitch items then please sit down. You're in the right place. Um, I've been stitching for about six years now and um, really really enjoy the hobby. Um, started like everyone did probably with kits. Um, one of the first things I remember stitching was for a friend of mine which was a, a height chart for their little girl um, for Christmas which they were really happy with. Um, and then about three or four years ago really got into it in a bit more detail and so buying kits I started to buy um, charts, fancy floss, um, put things together myself and then to change things up and, uh, and go from there really. Um, I absolutely love watching floss tube myself. Um, some of my favourite floss tubers um, really go with, go along with my week. Um, Coffee Stitcher for example I watch on a Sunday evening whilst I'm making tea. Um, Joyful Stitcher, um, I tend to catch her on a Saturday morning along with Barbara's daughter. Um, I'm also a Barbara's daughter, not the Barbara's daughter but she's the Barbara to me. Um, it goes without saying Brenda and the Serial Starter, they are immense and have cost me hundreds of pounds um, since they started. Um, other people I really like to watch are Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher, um, Brenda the Handwork Maniac, um, all sorts of different people and no doubt I will link them below and also shout out more of my favourites uh, as we go through the floss tubes. Um, my favourite designers, um, I love stitching Halloween things, Plum Street Stitchers, um, Plum Street Samplers, sorry, um, hands across the sea, anything with a button, really got into Barbarana um, with something I'm going to show you in a minute, Prairie Schooler, Kathy Barrick, um, Blackbird Designs by all the Blackbird. Um, so I wanted to do my floss tube in my stitchy spot, this is my spot, I am Sheldon when it comes to, to having a spot. Um, a stitch in hand, I didn't always but most recently, um, probably for the last three years, I stitch in hand. Um, my cross is, the top leg of my cross goes from bottom right to top left, which seems to be slightly um, different to most stitching that I see. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's just the way I do it. Um, and I stitch using the sewing method with a full cross. I didn't know where to start with what to show you today. Um, it's like trying to, to jump into a moving skipping rope. Where do you actually start? Where do you jump in? So what I thought I'd do was I'd start with August and what I've been doing with August. Um, a lot of people have been doing arbitrary August. Um, I'm not particularly good when it comes to wheels and stitching things. Um, I tend to just think what I want to stitch on and, and then stitch on it. Um, but I did want to get a few things a few things done. So um, my August has been Arts and Gear August. Um, getting some things finished, some things that I started for um, Jolly July, some things that, um, some salves that I've been working on, just want to get them done and some finishing. So I've got a few things that I've actually finished to show you this month, um, some FFOs to show you. I am one of those people, I do like to get things FFO'd quite quickly. Um, so you, you will see you will see those sorts of things. So where to start with? Should we start with the things that are finished? Okay, so these are things that I've finished this month. Um, and a couple of them I've FFO'd as well. And if you follow me on Instagram, Mama Loves You GB, um, then you can see you can see these things. I'll try and give you as much detail as I can about them. Um, I do have a list, I keep all my stitching on an Excel app. Um, nothing more than the name. Of the, of, the, of the chart, the name of the designer, the fabric, the date I started it, and then I have pages which run um, the days of the month. And so I literally just tick off which days I've stitched on which projects. And so I can just see how long things have taken me when I started them, um, things that I've let to um, fester, um, 
things that maybe I should just give up on. Um, although there's not too many of those, I don't tend really to give up on lots of things. Um, but we'll see. Right, let's get on and see some, some stitching. Um, I've got big piles of stuff here to show you. Um, so let's see. Um, first thing I'm going to show you is a fully finished object. Um, now this is Penny Autumn by Plum Street Samplers. Uh, it started off as a stitch along in the uh, Plum Street Stitchers group um, on Facebook. Um, I started mine where are we? Do, 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 on the 24th of June and I decided to stitch mine on 32 Count Murky using the Corn Four Colours, either the DMC or the Fancy Floss. So I don't know if you can see, this is my finish. I absolutely love the way that the murky, let me go this way, I love the way that the murky has um, kind of given it a more stormy, autumny, moody look. Uh, and I managed to pick up this frame um, and give them a little plug in um, the frame shop in Stow on the Wold, Cotswold Art Supplies. Um, it's owned by my godmother and that's where I'm from, the Cotswolds, uh, now living in West Wales. But um, they have a stock of sort of frames that they've made up that are slightly odd sizes and so if you go in see what you can find but they're also brilliant for um, stretching and framing needlework. They've framed quite a few of my bigger pieces and I've always been really really happy with them. Um, so yeah this is Penny Autumn. I love, love that penny border. I haven't got any glass on here. Um, sometimes do, sometimes don't. It depends. Usually don't. Um, so that's Penny Autumn. So I finished stitching that this month and then framed it. Um, the next two things um, I managed to pick up. Let's see if I can find it. I managed to pick up this book. Um, with the needle and thread, or with needle and thread by Blackbird Designs. It's an older Blackbird book, um, but it's got so many brilliant, brilliant things in it. Um, that's the one that I've done. And I've also done, there we go, the pin chart, uh, the pin keep that goes with it, trying not to show off the chart there. Um, I bought this book on eBay, um, came in brilliant, brilliant condition and I was stitching outside one day and my daughter who was in her sort of pool fired over some water and it went on the book and as you can see one of the pages has all gone crinkly. It hasn't damaged anything, she is still alive, um, just, but oh. so there is literally not a project in here that I don't want to do. Um, I don't know whether you've had a chance to have a look at some of these. Let's try and angle it down so you can see. Um, I've also done this one, um, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but this one, I think, is going to be my next one. Um, sorry that all the words are back to front, I am using the front camera. This is my first go at this. I'll see if I can rectify it another time. So there we go, that's that one. So, I made, oops, let's get that to sit nicely. There we go. So I made the little pin key. There. And I used the style of finishing where you just sew round completely and then you cut a slit in the back and then you cover it with a little bit of felt or something else. I might put a few sort of bank, blanket weave stitches around there to finish it off. And I've just put on, is that going to focus in? I've just put on a little 2020 tag um, just to save putting the date on the actual, on the actual item. So there's that. And then this is the second part of it. So I, because I've framed a lot of things and made a lot of pillows and cushions, I wanted something slightly different for this. So this is a, a needle book that I've made. And so inside I've just got some 
nice quality coordinating belt. There we go. And I actually used the same technique of sewing it all the way around and then cutting a slit in it to put uh, to, to be able to turn it inside out and I glued around the outside of that so I can use that still if it's a needle piece and I have got a random needle in there which looks like an ordinary sewing needle um, so yeah, a couple of vintage mother of pearl buttons I'm big on the mother of pearl buttons and buckles and things like that, I like those so finished stitching that this month and I sewed it so that comes under my August starting point um, now if you follow me on Instagram at all I will have been raving about um, a stitch along that I found just by chance actually um, on Creative Poppy um, you can go along you can still join the pattern I can't remember if I paid in pounds or dollars it was either £9.99 or £9.99 Either way, it was an absolute steal. Um, and it's a design by Barbara Anna called Santa's Trips. Um, and I'm stitching it using the called for DMC. I go this way. Um, and it's going to be nine patches um, with the border going all the way around. Now, I absolutely adore that border and that border actually prompted me to start another piece which I'll I'll show you in a minute um, so that was the first one there the one with the little yellow houses and then and Mr and Mrs Santa there on a deer or a reindeer and another snow globe scene there and then this month the first of the month was them riding a rabbit what more could you want they're riding a rabbit um, this sale comes out on the first of the month and either the 14th or 15th of the month, I can't remember which, but I tend to start stalking it the day before because I want to get on with this and I want to do it as soon as it comes out. So apologies to those of you who are um, who do follow me on Instagram who are also doing the sale because I tend to get it done as quickly as I can because it's gorgeous, it's absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait, I can't wait to finish it. Um, I think if I remember correctly it finishes sometime in November so plenty of time to get it FFO'd ready for Christmas but seriously if you're not if you're not stitching this you need to be you need to be it is stitched on a piece of 28 count linen in a mystery colour I'm pretty sure it's a Zweigart and it's not far off something like a dirty or a natural something like that I'm not quite sure it just it was just in my stash so I don't know what it was um, I didn't tell you what I'd stitched those on those are stitched on a piece of 32 count just kind of a cream I don't tend to use a lot of cream um, and with these I'd some, I wish a, a little bit I would I'd chosen something a little bit more grungy but I do like them. So um, I've been stitching on those. So I said that the Santa's Trip Sal um, had prompted me to start to look at, at something else. And what it started me looking at was a Baltimore album quilt. Um, I loved the border and I knew that I'd seen that style of border on something, on quilting. And so I went on to Instagram and I found all these glorious pictures of Baltimore albums quilts and they I don't know much about quilting but they seem to have applique designs in the middle of squares with that glorious border and I found some that were absolutely to die for so if you've never looked for a Baltimore album quilt go and have a look for one um, and I just typed in Baltimore album cross stitch and what came up was a design by Carolyn Manning which was a PDF you just download um, you just see to use the crinkling if I can find there it is. my picture so this is what the design will look like once it's completed it's all charted in DMC's 
uh, and I'm using the core for DMCs except for the green that goes around the outside. Um, I'm using Weeks Dye Works Okefenokee because I didn't have, I think it's DMC 500, I didn't have it, um, and, but I did have some Okefenokee. So it's the same, same sort of thing, there's not much variegation in it. Um, and this This is where I am on this one. I'm stitching it on a Permian of Copenhagen 32 count in the colourway 76. Um, when you first take it out of the packet, it will stand up by itself. I don't mind that so much being a, an in hand stitcher, but um, it's softening up nicely. And again, this will be a nine patch. Um, with that glorious border all the way around the outside. Uh, and I can't wait to stitch some more on this one. I think it's going to be amazing. So that's something I've been working on as well. And then, <coughs> excuse me, what else have I got in my pile? Ah, this is a little finish. Now I did bring a board to try and show this you might remember it's another design from the with the needle and thread back to it book. This is actually the design that I bought that book for. I've always loved this. I think it's on um I sometimes see it on Carol Saltbox Stitcher's wall. Um and I love it. I went ahead and bought the uh Karen Water Lilies that go for this one. This is the kelp. Um this is on a piece of 32 count <laughs> linen it was a natural linen that I over dyed with a bit of rip um, you'll find that um, I do like to over dye or to dye quite a lot of linen um, so there we go it does have room for a couple of over one initials at the bottom there but I decided to leave those off um, beautiful I love this I love this looking for a frame for this one it's a bit of a funny size slightly bigger than four by six but doesn't quite have the proportions to go five by seven so we might have to have a custom frame or like something completely different with it you never know so that's something else that I worked on and finished in um in August um what else have we got let's have a look ah this is something that I started in jolly July it is the first of Sorry, just looking for the actual chart. Is that it? Okay, oh, lost a lost a floss. It's the first in the berry collection by Erica Michaels. Um, I love strawberries. I love doing strawberries. Um, so this is the first one here, the partridge in a pear tree, and it is stitched on a piece of 32 count platinum Zweigart. I just wanted something quite plain for these because obviously there's 12 of them and they've all 12 got to suit the fabric. Um, I'm using the call for colours. Um, what I did was I looked on the pattern to see which call for colours appeared in most of them. And those are the ones that I bought. And then any other ones, I'll just use the DMC. Now, I did throw one on the floor, and I think it was the Weeks Dye Works Raspberry. So, we've got uh, Dirt Road. I'm sorry, my, my flosses are always in a bit of a hot mess. Um, I'm trying to be better. Havana. Uh, Schneckley. Swamp Water. And the one that I've used most this time is I got the right seaweed. Um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to wait until I've done all twelve before I finish them, or whether I'm just going to make sure I've got enough finishing materials to do to do all twelve. But I'm really pleased the way that that has stitched up. Looks lovely. Um, this is a little bit brighter than it's showing up on camera at the moment. I love it. 
so my next piece um, that I've been working on that I've started actually is um, another stitch along because I needed another one of those um, and the reason that I've got it and the reason that I've started it is because I was dyeing some fabric um, now for my birthday which was in July I got some Procyon dyes um, which are the fibre reactive dyes so you need to use soda ash and I had some great, I've had some great results um, you'll probably see in future um, floss tubes dyes uh, fabric that I've dyed using that um, but I decided to try and do I only had a little bit of grey rip dye left so I decided to do a jar dye with grey rip and then an ice dye overlay with the Procyon dyes but what I didn't factor in was that I hadn't put the soda ash on the um, fabric beforehand and so I kept, got this beautiful piece of fabric hung it out to dry and literally the Procyon dye just dripped just dripped off the fabric completely didn't stick at all um, so then I rinsed it out, over dyed it again with some more rip uh, and I came up with a piece of fabric I really like the colour that's the colour there um, it's one end it's got a bit more of like a turquoise to it I would say it's probably pretty close to a picture this plus dapple or felspar something like that um, anyway I wasn't looking for another cell but this one popped up uh, it's called Halloween Parade uh, it's only in four parts the first part came out on August the 15th the next one's the 29th of August September the 12th and then September the 26th so it's not going to be a very big one um, and it's actually to make a, a hanging banner which would be, which would be nice um, but it was the matching colour of fabric that I just dyed and so it was just, just meant to be. Um, so what I've stitched, the first part had the entire border. So it's like a, a pendant banner um, that you hang. Um, so I've, what I've stitched is the top border, or the top half of the border. I've got my fabric doubled over so it's going to carry on down here and then go into a point. Um, the top half of the border, and I've stitched the first part. Um, I don't know if you can see that this is, um, it's all charted in DMC. This is the DMC Etoile the black and this is the DMC Etoile the blank. Le blanc. Um, it's not quite as hateful as Krynik. It's not brilliant but short lengths is the key. Um, so it does have a little, little bit of sparkle to it. Um, so yeah, so the next section, um, I don't know if it tells me which order they go in, so the next section will be above or below, so we wait to see on the 29th of August. But yeah, so this is a 32 count, 32 count hand dyed with the Core 4 DMC, and again you can still get the sale if you would like to join. And then the last thing that I've been working on is something that I completed. In fact, there's two things. There's two things on here. Can't find the pattern. Anyway, it's finished so you can see what it looks like. This is Izzy Decaying, which I love. Great, great chart from Silver Creek Samplers and it's stitched on 32 count um, XG Designs Elixir so it looks kind of mouldy and that's why I liked it you can see I've still got quite a bit left there so it's that quarter that I bought it's a Halloween edition that I bought two or three years ago um, I'm pretty sure I've seen it since then so if, if you want to have a look go on to Etsy onto her XG Designs um, website it comes out of Hungary I believe um, but it's usually pretty good um, pretty reasonable times um, it's dangerous I warn you it's dangerous so this is that now I'm not a new stitcher I've done my fair share of charts this chart was haunted 
I tell you, it was haunted. I'd stitch something, I'd check it carefully, I'd look back, and what I'd stitch was totally different to what was on the chart. I've never made so many mistakes in a single chart in my life. Don't know. Don't know what was going on with it. So it then became, just get it done. Ask into gear augers, just get it done. So if anybody has got this chart at home and would like a little game of um, spot the difference, then please feel free. You can maybe tell me where I went wrong. I think the hat's right. The hat's right. And it's in the right place. Other than that, I don't know. I don't know. Everything seemed to be wrong. I think I probably stitched the chart twice. Certainly this first section, where I was trying to get it right. This second bit, where I was just trying to get it finished, maybe not. So, there we go. Now the other thing I've been working on is actually on the back of this fabric. And it's another cell. Why do I need more cells in my life? Um, but this is the Tiny Modernist Sal, the Ouija board Sal. Now, there was more parts out than, than what I finished on this. Um, let's see if I can get it to hold up. So it's going to be um, a Ouija board with this great haunted house in the middle. And again, it's on this Elixir fabric, which is, I just think is amazing. Um, I've got about a quarter of it left, so something else will be going on there. Um, it only uses three colours, I think. Um, a DMC 310, a grey, um, which I think I use chalkboard, um, and a white. And I'm contemplating whether to do the glow in the dark or not, um, or whether I can do without that pain in my life. Um, I've stitched with the glow in the dark before. Again, short lengths is okay, but um, it's not my favourite. So we'll see. The reason that I haven't done any more on this is because this here, no, this here isn't going to hit quite where it should do. And I'm just worried I've made a counting error in the border. I don't think I have because it all matched up and it all went through fine. So the chances are my counting errors somewhere else but what I wanted to do was to wait and make sure that when these are released that I can that I can work them if there's a, if there's a problem somewhere um, the corners the four corners have been released and the top and the bottom have been released as well but I'm waiting for this side so as soon as that side's released I'll get on it but love that love that So, I think that's everything that I've actually worked on this month. Um, I've got a little bit of haul to show, um, not much, just a few things that come into plans um, and we'll see where we go from there. So, um, let's have a look and see what we've got in haul. First thing that I bought, which I'm sure you've all seen, is from the Heartstring Samplery. Samplery, I belong to the Cross Stitch Nation. Um, Carol Sotbox Stitcher is stitching this at the moment, and she is, as always, doing a brilliant job with it. That one was amazing. Um, but I've seen it finished into a drum, and that's that's what I want to do. I want to do it as a drum. So, yeah, I'll get on to that at some point. Um, this next one is by a company called uh, Kaniki Prims and Whims. Um, they've got their own website. Um, and this is the old general store. Um, it wasn't actually this pattern that caught my eye. Another pattern caught my eye. Um, but when I looked at it, it was massive. It was huge. Um, I still would love to do it, but I haven't got a stock for that at the minute. I've got a lot of these big old projects going on. Um, so, there's that one. And I also have bought a piece of Weeks Dye Works. Uh, I believe it's Tin Roof. Tin Roof Gingham in 28 count. So I think that might be going on there at some point. 
no problem if it's you shall see um the next purchases let's show you these ones quickly these i picked up on ebay um, i've always loved these little christmas birds um, button up birdies by um, the victoria sampler so that one is the november chickadee and uh, the december cardinal and then we've got the christmas robin and the mama cardinal and there you've got the three christmas birds beautiful so i'd like to have them done at some point in the future whether they're going to get done for this christmas mm, i wouldn't like to run out to put money on it um i picked up these ones from peakside needlework in the uk um, a fantastic company if you ever need anything give give them a ring and speak to them. Sue is an amazing lady. She keeps everything as well stocked as she possibly can in these times and you'll find lots and lots of really really unusual things there. So I picked up this one which is the Teresa Koga um, Fabulous Monsters. This is number two in the series. I checked out number one. I wasn't so best on number one but I did like this one. I love these guys. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to stitch them together or separately. The called for is murky. Um, I've got a bit of 32 count murky left over from Penny Autumn. But with that dense of stitching, I think I'd probably go to 28 count just because I find the uh, picture this plus can be so tight on the weave. Um, so yeah. And then I picked up this one as well um, by Brenda Gervais with her needle and thread which is the Halloween version of the little coffee co um, cushion. And I've got a couple of these little spoons. As soon as I saw this one, um, I, had to, I had to have it. This is on my immediate radar, as uh, Brenda and the Serial Starter would say. This, this could get done for this year. Uh, a couple more things. This one, I'll show you freebie. This one, um, forgive my... Whenever I print out Stone Street Stitch Works, they always, this always moves over. This was actually a freebie that was posted on their Instagram site. Um, I want to say it was for World Cross Stitch Day. Um, I think it was going to be there for a week, so it may still be there. I can't remember. You'll have to go and, go and check it out for yourself. But that is a beautiful sampler, which has been finished on, on a horn book. Um, it calls... Four. Copper Linen by Witchelt and Classic Colour Works Black Coffee and Stormy Night and Light Mocha Brown. So I'll either go for those or something, something similar, which you'll see. Beautiful. And the last thing that I have got is um, something that Barbara's daughter showed a couple of weeks ago now. Um, I've been wanting to do a monthly series for a little while, but you know what's like with the monthly series, you find them and then you've got six that you like and six that you don't like. And um, when I look through these, there's ten of them at least that I really do like and two of them that I can probably um, alter a little bit. So I've got three of them. These are by um, Sandra Workman from Pine Mountain Designs, which I bought from Etsy, and they're the Snapshot series. So that's the October one. Um, I think if you stitch them on the 32 count vintage country mocker, which is what I'm going to do them on, they come out as six by four, so they'll fit in a nice, probably a five by seven frame. Um, so that's the October one, all chartered in DMC. And the November one. Okay, lovely. And the December one. Now there are two that you can use for December. One is a kind of nativity scene, whereas this one is perhaps the more sort of traditional Christmas one. So this is the one I went for. Um, I, I did like the other one, um, and maybe would stitch it at some point. But this is um, this is the one I chose. So. 
Um, and that is it for haul, apart from just the DMC and the vintage country mocker that I needed for those, which came from Pizza Needle. Okay, um, so plans. I'm good at making plans. Um, not always that brilliant at sticking to them. As I said, I like to just stitch what I like to stitch, um, and that's it. We're back to school in um, September. I'm a um, secondary school teacher. Um, I teach science. Excuse me. So things are about to go crazy. So I don't know how much stitching I'm going to get done in September. I do like to stitch something every day. Um, just because I find it stops my brain whirring. Um, I can sit and watch TV and I can still be thinking about stuff, whereas if I'm stitching, it, it stops that. It stops me just mulling things over. So I will stitch something, I stitch on something every day, even if it's only 10 stitches. But um, sample September is coming up, um, and I've got a few samplers on the go that I definitely want to, to get back to. Um, I've got a few other things that uh, are kind of left over from Arsene Gear August. I've um, got a few days left of August, so I'm going to see how many of these things I can get get done. Um, so I'll show you some of my plans. So this is the first, probably the first on the list, because there's not a massive amount of stitching left in this. Um, this is Witchy Washy by Raise the Roof. It's something that I started in Mania, actually. I did a button Mania. So I worked on whips during the week. And then all of my new starts for Mania had buttons. Um, and these... These are the buttons that go with this stitch. So there's a little pumpkin in the back there. Um, and this is on a piece of 32 count uh, so I got that I hand dyed. Um, I think the technique that I used with this one, now what did I do? There was one point where I made some ice cubes with dye. Rather than putting dye on top of ice cubes to ice dye it, so powder dye, I actually used some writ dye and made some ice cubes to see if it would work. I think I did it with this one. Um, if not, it would have been just a normal jar dye. Um, and I think I'm going to make a drum. I think this would make quite a nice drum. So um, I used the Vonna one of Pfeiffer's tutorial that I've used in the past and we shall see, maybe maybe make a drum out of it Let's give it a go I think that could be, could be quite fun so that is definitely something that I want to um, finish, I'm just making a great big pile down there um, we shall see this is Something else that I started in. No, get the right bag. Something else that I started a very long time ago, actually. Now, um, this is a design by Teresa Koga, which has just come out um, at market this year. But it is also in one of the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazines. I'm just going to see if my print off has it written on the bottom. Yeah, it's the 2018 Christmas Winter issue. And actually, it was this chart that got me to sign up for Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. And if you're not signed up for that, then I really recommend that you go and have a look at it. There have been so many charts that I would have bought that have actually appeared first in that magazine. So if you think about the cost of the chart versus the cost of the subscription, even if there's only two or three of them throughout the entire year that you would have bought as a released chart, you 
you've made your money there. Um, so these are the colours. I've got these ones in a little floss away bag. I'm, I'm not happy with my floss storage. I'm really not. Um, I bobinate. I have bobinated a lot of my DMC. Um, but then it gets in a mess. I tend to keep my fancy floss either in floss away bags or on just on floss rings. Um, and we'll, but I'm not happy. I've got to find something that I like and that works. Which is daft. It's daft. I don't know if you've if you've ever been onto my Etsy store. Um, I make project bags for other people. I don't make them for myself. Uh, most of my project bags are this type of thing. Um, mainly because when I get a chart and I've got either some floss or some fabric that I want to go with it, I like to put it together straight away. And I can't keep up with myself. Um, there's no way that I could keep up with making the nice project bags for myself. So I make them for other people. I also make um, floss keeps, the little, fl little fancy floss drops. They're lovely. Um, and I sell floss rings. So I've got all of this stuff. I just don't use it myself. Not because it doesn't work, because it just works brilliantly. Because I'm usually in too much of a hurry to get something started, to pull the floss, to pull the, um, the fabric. So I need to slow down and organise myself at the beginning of the project. That would be, that would make more sense. Um, so that is something that I want to get back to. Um, the next thing that I started, this is why I've got a bag that won't open now. Get the nice bags, Michelle. Make yourself some nice bags. There we go. Um, this one, Yuletide Shanty. I started this in Jolly July. Now, I would never have bought this chart from the cover photo. But I saw somebody who'd made it and it was gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous because what you can't really see here is that this is a huge sperm whale. Um, now, as I said, I'm a science teacher. My background is actually marine zoology. So anything that's got a whale, any kind of sea creature on it, um, something that's on my immediate radar is also Lindy Stitches, the, the booby pattern that she did because I spent some time out in the Galapagos Islands and I can't wait to stitch that. Um, anyway, this one, again, is on a 32 count. I believe it's called, it's either pearl grey or whisper grey. Um, I've just written down grey. 32 count grey, let's go with that. Um, sand's looking a little bit of a funny colour, but that is my sperm whale. I've used a Victorian motto for that one. Other than that, it's all a Cornfall DMC, or close to. Uh, and I've stitched the top of the drum, no, the bottom of the drum, nearly. And so all I've got to do is the top, which has got the big ship on it. So that's all I've got to do there. Um, but I would never have picked out this chart had I not seen somebody make that. So that's something that I've got to do. Um, and then because it's Sampler September, the samplers that I really want to work on um, sorry, I'm just on my board that I just narrowly chucked down here. Um, the samplers I want to work on, the first one is Mary Clayton um, by Hands Across the Sea. I love this chart. It's so beautiful. I'm stitching it on 36 count um, linen that I hand dyed myself. Just a quick dip dye just to give it a bit of a, a colour and a bit of so hopefully you can see the colour that's a bit better there so you can see I've probably got a decent quarter of it done um, stitching with one thread using the Cornfall DMC on this one um, but I want to get her done and the other one that I have started 
is another hand across the sea one which is Jane Fiddler's 1835. Now this is beautiful. Um, there's a group on Facebook for people who are stitching this and they have put in that group, Nicola Parkman, uh, I believe done most of it, um, recharting for all the letters so that you can completely turn this into um, a sampler for, for yourself. You don't have to just stitch the reproduction as it is, you can personalise this even more. Um, now this started, when did this one start, in July, it started in July, um, but I wanted to do Jolly July, um, so I literally just got, there we go, I literally just got the border done, and there is a break in the border here for one of the letters, so I left the break, because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it, um, and this is this D, DMC, this is 37 count corn tassel from Access Commodities. Have I said that right? Yeah, 37 count corn tassel, which is really, really beautiful um, to stitch on. This linen came from um, Patchwork Rabbit, which is another one of my favourite online stores. So, now... I don't know what to do with the letters here. Um, my family is not massive of people that I would put, that I feel I would put on a sampler. Um, my partner's family, again, is not massive. And then you've got the whole thing of everybody in your family having the same surname. So for us, there'd be lots of Bs and lots of Ws. An idea that cropped into my head, and I don't really know if it's the done thing with an 1835 sampler, sorry, um, I've got a mind to change the letters uh, into Harry Potter characters. Um, I don't know if that's a crazy thing. Harry Potter, I absolutely adore Harry Potter. Um, and I know there's plenty of stitches that you can do with Harry Potter. Um, but I was thinking, you know, Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, Ron Weasley, Albus Dumbledore. Um, I'd have to include Albus Dumbledore because one of the things I didn't tell you is that uh, living with us here in West Wales, we have a giant Dalmatian and his name is Albus. Um, he's huge. So I'd like to, he'd, he'd be a bit more on there, Albus Dumbledore. And then maybe put the names of some of the other characters down there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's just a crazy idea. Um, but I might do it. I might. I'll either stitch it exactly as it is, or I'll change them to Harry Potter characters. One of the two. Right. So, I think that's um, pretty much everything that I've got to share with you. I'll try and make sure that I link um, down below some of the people that I've mentioned, some of the shops I've mentioned. Um, if you need anything, if you want me to clarify anything, then just drop me a question um, or message me. Um, you can either do that on um, Instagram or you can just, as I said, drop me a message down below. Um, but that was my first floss tube. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. hope you found some things that you, that you liked. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Um, I'm thinking maybe once every two weeks um, would, be, would be good. I do have a lot of whips though. I've got about 40 whips on the go, so I may drop in a whip parade before the next two weeks if I've got, if I get the chance, um, just because I feel like it's a full, a full confession then, you know, you get to know me as a stitcher, this is all the stuff that I've got um, on the back burner. But anyway, I'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye bye.